inch. Mm. Very sad. Not great. However, do you not think it would be really awfully sad if we had a country completely devoid of animals? The countryside would look totally different. Sod the sea. We don't really see the sea very often. I see fields. Fields yeah, are nice and cows. The sea is very important when it comes to actually how the global climate reacts and how the weather but Do you not think acts? the global climate would be different? We've had mammals grazing for years and years and years, and it's not really... Yeah, OK. Yeah, sure, but I let don't them like graze. Why do you have to then kill them and eat them? So what is mutton going to eat? Fast vegetarian food. Could you ever live on a vegetarian diet, do you think? Never. I mean, Personally, the way I feel is that... They, some can be, like, treated well, some can be treated really badly, but at the same time, when you think about it, they're both going to end up in the same position. So that's why their welfare doesn't some, sometimes bother me at all, really. A ridiculous statement, because we're all going to die. It's like saying we could live our lives in a box and it wouldn't matter because we'll all die. Can't really be thinking about, oh, how it lived before, before I enjoy eating it. OK, guys, we're going to carry on. I can see we're, we're getting into a <laughs> good, good long debate here. That's why we're all here for yeah. the entire week. It is time to go out into the field and to meet the animals, and also to choose the animals that you're going to slaughter. By the end of the day, the new farmhands will have chosen two beasts to take to the abattoir and will then watch them die in front of them. To meet the animals, the volunteers are split into two groups. Vegan James is with meat-eating students Luke and Phoebe. while the other non-meat eater, Christella, is with mother of two, Kerry, and fast food fanatic, Mossen, who's never been up close to cattle. I just know animals yeah, are smelly, well, farm animals. <laughs> <laughs> I love meat. I enjoy it. I can't go without it. I feel empty if I haven't eaten meat in a day. My favourite fast food is McDonald's. I like Chinese and I like kebab, but if you go to different ones, they don't always taste the same. I'm a dedicated fan. I cannot live in the countryside. It's too quiet, it's too spacious. On hand to help Mossen and her group is stockwoman Fran Mortimer. Well, we've got some lovely looking cattle behind me here. They're okay, right, you know. Are well, they safe? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> okay. The girls coax the cattle over to meet them with hay. Oh, look, they're coming. If we just stand nice and quietly, hopefully they'll come up and say hello to you all. If you just all crouch down, they'll probably come up and have a good old sniff at you. They're not actually oh. as big as I thought they would be. I thought they were going to be yeah, taller. Across the country, two million cattle are killed for beef every year. But on this farm, the animals are grown slowly and only 100 are slaughtered annually. What encouraged you in the beginning to take up traditional farming methods? We believe so passionately that it is the right way to farm in this part of the country. And so we've stuck to our principles and we feel sure that as consumers know more about the provenance of their meat, they, we hope, will increasingly understand the value of farming breeds like this in their indigenous part of the country. What's the other side to the cattle rearing story? About half the beef we eat in this country has come from dairy herds and the beef comes as a byproduct. But most of them will have been reared artificially on a bucket, totally dependent upon humans for the whole of their lives. So what type of meat is better or worse? The prime beef will come from slowly grown beef type cattle with the fat in between the muscle finished slowly on grass. That makes perfect beef. Dairy cross beef is perfectly good, but this is better. Can intensive cattle farming continue at the rate it's currently growing at? If the Chinese alone ate the amount of meat the Americans did, they would consume something like 125% of all the cereals in the world. It just can't be done. So it has to come to a stop sooner or later. So, Mossen, mm -hmm. what's it like being this close? It's different. Obviously, like living in London, you don't get a chance to see animals. Have you ever been this close before? Never. To... Never. And mean, what do you think of them at this proximity? I don't even think of them as living, like, not <laughs> living, but, you know... And now but you've I've... seen them in fields before. Yeah, I've seen them in fields, but they're just it, far away, you know, in fields. But now I see them close, see them breathing, see the veins in their bodies, you know. I actually see them as living things. If you had to pick one of those to, uh, to go and be slaughtered, 
Which one do you think you'd go for now? Ah, uh, I would choose the one that has less poo on its bum. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still just looking at them as food? Yeah. But right now I can see them as living beings, but in the end they are going to be food, unfortunately. Oh, fortunately. Christella, what do you else? think about the prospect now of making a choice? I'm a coward. I wouldn't make a choice. I'd leave it up to you to choose the room. <laughs> These guys here, the farmers, you know, they, they must be strong to do this. In an adjoining field, Luke, James and Phoebe are meeting the co-owner of the farm, Henry Gregg. The important thing about being with animals is just to be very sort of calm and relaxed with them and then they'll be calm and relaxed with you. So if we just lay a bit of hay out for, for them just across the ground. I don't like the hay. No. Sociology student Phoebe, who hopes to be a professional horse rider one day, seems at ease with the red rubies. Come on then, don't be shy. I hunt a lot, of my, a lot of my friends shoot. Um, so, you know, our sort of deep freeze at uni is stocked with various um, game birds and a bit of venison if we're lucky, which I, I would prefer to eat game, personally. I've seen things killed, I've killed things. It's a necessary way of life. So, yeah, as long as it's had a nice life, I'll eat it, basically. Henry, how are our novices doing? up close and personal with your lovely herd. <laughs> They're doing absolutely brilliantly. They've been very calm, very relaxed, which has meant that the cattle have stayed very calm and very relaxed. Luke, are you a bit overwhelmed by it all? I was expecting to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, with us even coming into their personal space. It's their field, essentially. It's where they live. Mm. But uh, they were really sort of mild-mannered with us and things like that. Does that mean there's a, a bit of bonding going on here? Yeah, could call it that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to make your decision? Uh, a bit more difficult when it comes to choosing a cow to go to slaughter? I don't know. I'll have to see how I sort of feel. James, are you going to be able to make a decision like that? I don't want to have that, that, that blood on my hands, as it were, because I don't want to be responsible for anything's death. I'm of the belief that, you know, death should be a natural thing. Do so you um, love all animals? Yeah. I mean, even ones that scare the hell out of me. Right, guys, you've had a chance to get up close and personal with the animals. Now it is time to choose which cattle are going to be slaughtered. There are three bullocks behind you. Peter, how do they do this? How do they make this vital decision? Well, what we'll do is run the cattle up into the crush, and then it's a process of putting the hands actually on the bullock, because what we want to feel for is those bullocks that have really reached natural maturity. And on that basis, we'll pick two of the bullocks which are absolutely perfect to kill today. Sounds a little ominous, but take them into the crush. <laughs> OK. Peter teaches the group how to move the three bullocks into the crush. That's it. Just stay in a line right across the pen. The size of their heads, you know. They're really big, aren't they? <laughs> There are four places that I feel, and, and every week when I pick out cattle to kill, I do the same process. The first place is just here over the ribs. And what I'm feeling for is the layer of, of the firmness and the fat over those bones. And if you push quite hard, you can almost feel the rib bones. Yeah. OK? So with a bullock that really wasn't mature, you'd feel the bones, they'd be like my bones. Yeah. Very, very easy to feel. I can't believe this is ribs. The next one is right over the shoulder blade, and I just put my whole of flat of my hand over the blade of the shoulder like that. A nice, smooth, round finish. John, this is a very intimate way to choose an animal to be slaughtered. Right. Um, during intensive farming methods, presumably the time isn't there to, to choose an animal this way. In the really big intensive units, like the big feedlot units, when you're turning out a whole pen of about 400 cattle a day, mm. uh, it'll be just on, done on weight and how long they've been on the lot. So, so just bung it, them on a big set of scales? Just bung them on a set of scales and push them through, yes. And the third place, guys, that I feel is beside the tail. I'm just feeling that little bit there. 
which is a piece of fat they lay down just either side. And then, it's these.